All right, we'll go ahead and get started here. Welcome, everybody. My name is Brian Peck. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Mazevo. Many of you I've met before, a few of you I haven't, but it's great to see everybody here today. And uh, I know several of you have been on uh, these Mazevo Connect sessions before, and for several others of you, this is your first one. So welcome to everybody there. Uh, <clears throat> for those of you that this is your first one, we do Mazevo Connect about every month or so. And uh, it's just a way to kind of bring the Mazevo community together and we share tips and best practices, those kinds of things. And if you're curious on what other topics we've done in the past, we did, we started these last fall. We did uh, our first one, University of Tennessee at Martin uh, demonstrated how they use the Mazevo Ops app and gave us an overview there. We've had University of Iowa present on how they use tasks in Mazevo. Uh, Dean's also done a few of these in the past. Uh, he's done user security in Mazevo and uh, feature roundup was the one that we did last month. If you're curious about any of those, I always put them up on YouTube afterwards, uh, the recording anyways. So you can go out there if you just put Mazevo into the YouTube search, uh, they should all come up in there and you can watch them. But uh, Anyways, we're super excited today. We've got uh, Kimberly Nielsen from the University of Texas that's going to be presenting on how they use uh, requests in Mazevo, and she's going to be sharing some of the things that they do and what they've learned along the way. So uh, we're super excited about that. Plans for this, the way these things kind of work is uh, we'll let Kimberly present as she's going through. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat there. We'll be watching those. And we're definitely going to save a few minutes at the end for Q&A and, and everything like that. So we'll have some time to answer some questions there. Um, everyone is muted right now. Uh, at the end, though, for q and I mean, if you have a question and want to unmute yourself, that's totally fine there. So um, anyways, uh, with that said, I think we'll go ahead and, and get started here. Uh, Kimberly is with the University of Texas at Austin. She's a senior event manager there, and uh, she's going to be talking about how they use requests. So, um, oh, one last thing, too. I wanted to introduce the other people on the Mazevo team here uh, that I've got with me here today. Some of these people you may have met before, Dean Evans, who's our CEO, my partner there. And then we've also got Wendy Newland, who's one of our trainers, and Joe Finley as well, who's also one of our trainers for Mazevo. And then we've also got Claire DeGroat with us as well. And uh, she helps me out here on the sales team. So with that said, uh, please help me welcome Kimberly Nielsen and I'll let you go ahead and take it away, Kimberly. Okay, hello. Um... Excited to be here, not going to lie, a little bit nervous when uh, Brian and Wendy first brought this up. I said, oh, yeah, we can do that. That'll be easy. And as I went into it, realized it's um, a little a little bit more complex than I thought when I really started thinking about how I could share what we do to process requests. So I'm going to um, share my screen after Brian gets off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that reminder. Let me go ahead and stop sharing here. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, at UT, the University Unions, we have um, four union buildings, but in addition to the unions using Mazevo, we also have our student activities division that uses Mazevo. And together we take care of our 1200 student organizations, our 13 colleges, which have like 170 units within them. Um, and that makes up our student body of about 40,000 and our faculty and staff of about 20,000. So, during our transition process, when, um, when you get to play in the Mazevo sandbox, um, one of the things that we learned was that we all have different needs from Mazevo and we all process everything very differently. And I need to move my gallery real quick. Um, so we all, you know, we all process things very differently and that started becoming an issue uh, amongst us as a team. 
And that's when Dean kind of stepped in and introduced us to the, the tenant um, system of Mazevo, where it almost looks like we have four different divisions, but what it's broken down by is how we process reservations. Um, our student activities division does, you know, hundreds of outdoor spaces. They also do our A-frames, they do our banners, and they do our tabling. And then the bottom three that you see there are our student unions. Um, so as we got into it a little bit further, we realized that our two largest student unions, the Texas Union and the WCP, we have a lot more questions we ask. And those questions really help us to process our reservations faster, to look at the reservation and be able to decide, are we the right space for them? Um, my specific buildings are the beautiful Texas Union and the Hogg Memorial Auditorium. Um, and uh, those can be used in a variety of ways. We have over 6,000 bookings per year. Some of those could be a very small, um, student org that has our officer meetings in one of our breakout rooms that seats eight conference style, but it can also be our larger events like a career fair that takes up not only our ballroom, but some of our uh, smaller meeting space for breakouts. They use um, some of our rooms that are designed for dining. And of course, as everyone on this call knows, we've all had to pivot and learn how to do hybrid events and virtual events. Um, so that's what we're doing at the Texas Union and trying to vet all of our reservations. We're also used very heavily by our campus events and entertainment division, which they handle all of our cultural associations, our creative arts and theater clubs, our distinguished lecture series, um, our Texas traditions, which we are very big on, and our, our movie series. Now, just to add one more layer of confusion to all of this, um, we have pricing that's different for every area. We have departmental pricing, we have sponsored pricing, we have student org pricing. So like I said, as we, as we got into this, we realized that we were all very different. Um, our two major reservation times for us at um, UT are the, first Tuesday in May and the first Tuesday in November. So uh, for our spring summer reservations, they make them in November. And for our fall reservations, they can be made in May. Uh, the nice thing about these two times is that this is when we're close to intercessions and close to breaks. So it does give us a little bit of time to process our reservations. Um, but this is kind of like what we call system open. It's a big day where we all sit and we watch our requests um, come in. Uh, during the uh, transition process, most of my campus partners thought, well, you know, with the tenant system, this is never gonna work. This is, uh, it's gonna be too confusing. Our students aren't gonna know where to go. They're gonna see these, the, all these buildings and not know what they're supposed to be. We sat in that, in an hour long meeting, um, I'm sure Dean remembers it because I, I could see the pain in his face as we did it. Um, they wanted to create user videos, how to use Mazebo. They wanted to create step-by-step -step docs on what do you do in Mazebo. And while we're on that call, literally one of my students slipped me a note and it said, and I still have a note, while you guys were discussing how to teach us how to be requesters in the software, I made four reservations. So the bottom line for us was trust the software. Um, so what happens at uh, UT is they can go to a number of places. This is just one place on our website, but we have lots of different links on our website where they can go and you know they click here and they go to our single sign-on. So just to give you a little example, it goes to our single sign-on. And then immediately after that, they're taken to the tenant and they choose what, what building they want. And most of our students, you know, they'll, they'll play around. They'll look at the different buildings. Um, 
A lot of times you're talking about officers who have passed down information and they know where they want to be. A lot of our departments know where they want to be. Um, we get very few calls with there being any confusion as to where they should have their event, unless they're a first time officer that didn't have any um, training from the previous officer, they may ask a few questions and that makes it easy for us. So um, that brings me to, for us, one of the most important things in um, the Mazebo system is the event questions. And um, you'll see here that it shows we have 30 questions. We don't ask everyone all 30 questions, but this really allows us to vet our reservation. So something like their EID, which is used for the single sign-on, we have to know that about everybody at ET, but we might have a question such as, um, if you're gonna be charging it to an inter-department transfer, we need your account number. Well, students don't do that, so that organization doesn't see that question. Um, we've even used our questions to give information. Um, you'll see right here, this question is, Will your event have catering? And then we put on there, because my, my particular building, you're not allowed to bring in outside food. You have to use our exclusive caterer. So we give that information in the question. I cannot tell you how much the questions and giving information in the questions has cut down on our phone calls. Um, people calling us asking questions. So. Um, that is one of my favorite parts about Mazevo. Um, on the system opening day in the fall of 2021, um, this number right here requests within the first hour was at 137. Now that was at the start of Omicron when requests were really down. So having 137 requests in, a, in an hour is, basically tells me the system is working as it's supposed to. Um, the hardest part is, as all of you on this call may know, when those requests start coming in and you get those notifications one after another, um, you can turn those off. I have them off because I get stressed hearing, oh my gosh, all these students, they need our help, they need our help. Um, however, my boss has them on so that she can see, you know, what type of events are coming in? And is there anything that rings a bell in her mind as having been a problem or um, needs a very specific location? Um, so the difficult thing for us is to sit and pause. As those requests come in, um, this is a really good time to look at the keywords in the event name and look at things that you might know you're gonna deny. For example, for us, um, if it says paint party, <laughs> we're not gonna let it happen in the Texas Union. If it says potluck, nope, you can't bring in outside food. Um, those types of things we try to deny first, we get through those denials for two reasons. We don't want them holding space. And it also lets that organization or that department find better space or maybe give us more information in the questions. Um, we had one recently, pajama party, and we don't allow pajama parties because we just don't know what's gonna show up. And um, they weren't actually wearing pajamas, they were making pajamas. So, you know, we asked them, well, if you change your event name, that might make it uh, something that we can work with better. So we also use this time as those requests are coming in and we're trying to pause to cross-reference with our partners at Student Activities to make sure that our organizations are actually in good standing with the university. So by midday and then throughout the rest of the semester, we go through the approval process. We have three approvers in our office and we all have different preferences of what we like to do. Um, let's see. One of our approvers, she likes to go through the book. She likes to go day by day, look for these little gray bars and work on those. Um, we also broke it down a little bit more because when you have a lot of requests coming in, there's always that question as who's working on that one? 
Has this someone already started this one? Which one should I do next? Which one should I concentrate on? Do we go in order of how they came in? Do we go in order of how big they are? So what we did was we kind of created little market segments for us. Um, one of our event managers during our heavy request time focuses on Greek life and spirit groups, whereas another event manager focuses on academic student orgs and cultural organizations. And I focus on the departments. This allows us to get through that heavy request time in a more organized way. Um, and then when the requests go down, we can work on them, you know, on anything. Um, so one of my favorite things is um, when I go to my day at a glance and I'm really proud because 17 requests, we are very caught up right now. Of course, our system open is uh, not far off, um, but 17 requests isn't that much. Um, one of my event managers, she likes to go in there and look at them in the order that they came in. Um, I think I said, I like to look at the big ones and let's get those processed because they're taking up space and let's make sure that we're the right fit for them. Um, but what I really liked about Mazevo for us is the confirmation process. So this is an event, whoops. This is an event that I created uh, just for training purposes. And when I go and I open it up, I may decide that um, the, the organization Mosaico Training Org has actually got a bar on it. They um, are they have some bills due, or there's some reason why they're why they're not allowed to make reservations right now. So if I want to deny them, I can go to the email. And I don't know if everybody knows this, but where you can change this wording right here. And that has been one of the best things for us in Mazeva. We change it all the time. Sometimes it'll read um, further instructions. Sometimes it'll say final notice before cancellation. If it just says confirmation, we find our students don't click on it. They don't read it. Um, but if we use wording that lets them know they have other action to take, they use it instantly. We can call or email a student three or four times telling them, you know, you haven't given us all the information, but as soon as we change this to final notice, we get a call within minutes. Or if we change it to cancellation, we get a call within minutes. So, um, when we go to send that, what it looks like to the student, it comes across request denied. So that really makes them take action and they can see, oh, what do I have to do? And then what we've done is we've tailored our messaging. So like, there's so many reasons that something can be denied and we build on this. Right now we have that maybe you're an unauthorized rep, maybe your group's not in good standing. Maybe you didn't uh, complete all the questions that we need you to complete. We keep adding to this when we find other things that could be why someone's denied. But now we only have to send this one denied letter to any of our events. Um, so I would have to say that that's probably been what makes our process the fastest. We use another one that says further instructions. So the student says, you know, sees further instructions and view further instructions. When they click on that at the beginning of the year, when we need to do a consultation with them, we've already added in all the dates of our consultations. We've included the Zoom link to them. So the students can quickly, um, and I keep saying students, but it does apply to departments as well, can quickly just choose a meeting to attend, but we don't have to go back and forth on the emails, tell me some dates you're available, that kind of thing. Um, so that is probably been, I guess, the tip and trick that, that we use to really quickly process our reservations. Um, 
And um, the main thing that we have noticed uh, in our transfer to Mazevo and using our questions on a regular basis, um, updating them, providing information in them, and using our templates is that our calls to our office went from nonstop all day long to really just specialty calls, people having very specific problems unique to them. Um, so that is the experience at the Texas Union and how we process our reservations. And um, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to help or actually send you to Wendy. <laughs> And I'm going to, you want me to stop my screen share, Brian? Uh, yeah, sure. That, that was great though, Kimberly. Um, just some great tips there. I've never seen that demonstrated before, how you change the wording and then it also changes it in the message. So it's just right in their face on, you know, what you need from the requester. I think that's a, that's a great tip right there. So. Um, um, I happened to see a question right away that <laughs> it may not be the first one, but it was, it kind of made me laugh. It said, how long did it take us to transition? And um, longer than it should have. And that was because everybody was afraid to make the move. Everybody was so set in their ways. And um, finally, basically I said, well, I'm going live. Um, you know, if you guys aren't ready to start processing reservations that way, and uh, I need to go live, I can't, I can't go one more system open on our old system. And um, we played around in the sandbox a lot longer than we needed to, but it was a pandemic. So we had a lot of time to spare. Um, I really think that if we had been in normal times, we would have had to, to reduce that greatly. But it took us maybe a week to really clean up all of our stuff on our end, but I think we could have, um, I think we could have done it even faster. Um, yeah. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> That's great. There's another question there too. Um, somebody wants to see how to change the title there in the corner. Um, do you want to show that, Kimberly, or you want us to do that? Um, what's easier I'd, for you? I'd be happy to. Let okay. Me, yeah. Make sure I still can. Um, okay. So our, let's see here. I'm going straight to um, my Mazebo. Um, assuming y'all can see that. Yep. We can see it. So over here on your toolbar, uh, your settings. You're going to go to your confirmation templates. And you'll see all the different titles that we have cancellation, final notice, <laughs> further instructions. Um, if you, if I wanted, let's just say I want to change the title on cancellation, um, you open that up and it's right here where it says title optional. And that's the word you change, just right there. I even have had to change that. Um, so we had HBO in at, um, at our location. So that was a special use uh, group and they needed their invoice in advance where normally we don't invoice until after the event. So just to create a fast invoice, I literally changed that word to invoice <laughs> so that it printed up um, and showed as an invoice. Yep. So, Great yeah, idea. That word right there. I hope awesome. that answered the question. Yeah. That's great. There's another question here about what would be your recommendation for those that might be transitioning, say, right now when events are starting to ramp up? Do you have any advice there? My advice would be do it sooner than later. Don't, um, we, we did one pause on our system open where we pushed it uh, because we were transitioning. We pushed it to July that combined with everything happening with COVID and um, 
it looking back it was just it was just silly um the software is so intuitive to the student body and if you've ever made a hotel reservation or an airline reservation uh your departments will know how to do this so i think that my advice would be just get in the sandbox get yourself comfortable with it um i made myself create a whole bunch of events. I added a few students on and made them create things. And I told them, get as weird and crazy as you can so that I can vet out what you're trying to do. Um, some that intentionally created events that should not happen. And it helped me to build my questions to make sure that we were covering everything. But I think my biggest advice is do it sooner than later. Great. One other question too that uh, came to my mind as you were uh, showing and walking through your process there is how do you handle following up with people? Let's say you get a request in and for whatever reason, you need to get some more information from them before you can move forward. Do you want to talk us through kind of what that looks like for you all and, and what you do today? Sure. Um, one of our confirmations is uh, further instructions for new meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, that one lets them know that we're looking at their event, but we need more information. And to please send us an email with some times that they're available that we can meet with them. Okay. Um, a lot of our follow-up happens through email and we have a joint email box where all of our event managers can go in and um, see what's coming in. We're, we kind of have a, a good uh, knowledge of who's been working on what, but I know that there are other universities where there's like seven people um, working. So I don't know if they go through their individual email. One of the things that we found is that using that that one hospitality email is that I can look at a history. Uh, when that student says, but I never got, I mm. can go back and find the Mazevo email. And I love that about the booking too, being able to go into the booking, look at the history of the email and say, well, at 324 on <laughs> February 2nd, you received an email um, mm -hmm. saying that you didn't show and you have a no-show fee. Um, so we do a lot of our communicating through email. Um, we do have some students call in, but it used to be that our phones just rang off the hook before we switch systems. Um, and on this system, most of our calls are going to be from departments that have much larger events and they want advice. You know, yeah. where do you think our, our room should go? What, what is your input as an event? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And kind of related to that, what uh, what's the expectation that you all set for turnaround on processing these requests with people? Do you set some kind of expectation with people or? Um, usually, you know, we really don't. Um, when we were on our old system, it, the steps were were so much more cumbersome that we, it seemed like we stayed behind. Mm -hmm. um, on this system, the steps seem to be uh, so much more smooth that we don't really have a, a processing deadline simply because it's, it's going smooth. That, that kind of sounds, um, I'm, I'm going to knock on wood <laughs> as I say that, um, but it really is going smooth. And a lot of times when we get those, those phone calls or emails that say, you know, I've been waiting for someone to contact me about my event. We go in and, uh, you know, we look at, at that new piece that you guys added that we, we all love so much. Um, we click on it and go, you just created it two days ago, or you just created it 24 hours ago. Um, you know, that's usually the calls that we get now are someone that created it last night and want to talk to us today. Yeah. Um, so we don't really have a, any kind of a timeline that we're, that we're pushing. I think that's mainly because 
you know, we're not getting complaints and it's going pretty smooth. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Uh, there's a, another question that came in here uh, it has to do with your three people that you have processing your requests. Um, they're asking, do you walk through and review the pending requests at some point using reports of some kind or something like that? Or um, do you want to go into how you look at those requests? Well, at our building at the Texas Union, um, since we do kind of have it divided up by um, our style of approving and our market segments as approving, um, each one of us goes in and unfortunately, since I created this event, I can't look at the event questions because I didn't have to answer them. <laughs> um, but as individuals, we look at our event questions and that's where we're, we're kind of vetting. Um, do they questions like do they need AV and is their event sponsored by another organization? Um, we have at at the University of Texas we do have groups that try to use the student orgs to get space at the University of Texas. Um, so we're always kind of watching for that, making sure that it's not a national organization getting you know ten thousand square foot of ballroom space for free because the student gets it for free. Um, so our process is individually, we look at these questions, we, um, we might uh, corral together uh, if we have a concern about one. Now we do a, a weekly meeting with our setup team and our AV team to talk about the next 10 days. But as far as approving, um, I think our training process went fairly smooth where we all know um, what we approve and what we don't. Um, and then when there's a question, we just, we think that, you know, they ask me and if I don't have the answer, I ask our director. Mm -hmm. okay. So Kimberly, do you primarily find those new requests through the day at a glance? Is that your starting point for, uh, I know you, one of your, your team members uses the book but do you, do you look at day at a glance and the open requests? Is that kind of where you start that whole process? Yes, definitely. One of the things that, um, I know I had day at a glance up here somewhere. Um, well, we'll just go to it. One of the things that I do is I pull up day at a glance every day just to check the tasks make sure that we're not outstanding in any tasks. Like right now we have a message that I don't think was there a few minutes ago um, when, when we first started this call. Um, and yes, I go to the request right away because I want to see what do we have coming in? Do we have anything uh, big coming up? Uh, like I said, one of my event managers, she likes to go in order it was received, whereas I like to go and click start date and see, oh, are we running behind? You know, especially right after system open um, to make sure that there's nothing that's coming up really quickly. Um, but yeah, I really like the day at a glance. I like um, that I can see my tasks and everything right there. I set a lot of my own tasks. Um, we use event notes a lot. Uh, so inside a booking, um, I might put an event note here that says, uh, you know, this group tends to be very loud. Um, so the next person that looks at this event, if they see that one in the event notes, they know to, to open it. Um, and we communicate with each other that way. Um, one of my event managers is really great about putting in, um, I went over all the rules with them. Um, it, it's just another checks and balance as, as everybody on the call knows, if we all have institutional rules that have to be followed. Um, so yeah, the day at a glance is, is very, very nice for me. Um, as, as the leader of the department, knowing that we're staying caught up.
Great. And uh, Kimberly, do you all, you don't book any classrooms, do you? Um, in the Texas Union, are there classrooms in there? Uh, we have student study rooms, but not classrooms. Um, Marcus's division, who you've worked with, uh, yeah. does classroom space. And I think that Nick may have a little bit of classroom space at our other uh, union building. We do not have classrooms at the Texas Union. Okay, gotcha. Um, the reason I asked, there was a question that came in is asking if you integrate your schedule with Workday to bring in classes like the academic schedule. And since you all don't do classes, I'm guessing no. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. That, okay. Yep. Gotcha. It would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. There's another one here. Ah. Uh, there's a question here, and I don't know if you want to answer this, Kimberly, those event notes that you just showed us here on the screen. Um, mm -hmm. There's a question, are those viewable by the customer? No, these event notes are not viewable by the client. Now the event notes, when you actually go into the booking and you add an event note, those are viewable. Um, so if I'm trying to tell housekeeping that um, watch for glitter, then the client can see that. So the way we have it set up is I can, I can put an event note right there, yeah. um, but it also lets the client know that we know they are bad about glitter. Um, so your event notes in your resources, the client can see, but these event notes that are in the actual booking, the client does not see. Yeah. So like you were saying, those are kind of notes that you use to communicate with your team internally and you all can see those. Yeah. Thing there. Yeah. Um, does, do you all use the messaging much in Mazevo there? You know, it's funny that you should ask that because the users, the requesters have recently discovered it and we find that it's coming in more and more. Like I said, mm -hmm. when we first started this call, um, that message wasn't there. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to click on it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, totally understand. Um, yeah. So what we're finding is that uh, requesters are starting to use it. In the beginning, it wasn't used much much at all, but it's starting to to become something that's used on a more regular basis. Great. Good. Does anybody else have any questions? Feel free if you want to unmute yourself, you can ask your question, put it in the chat. Uh, this is some great information here. I know I've learned a lot just from hearing this myself. It's great to hear real world, you know, what's going on and how you all do things. So super helpful. Kimberly, um, do, do you have many users use the phone app or does this all come through the web browser? Oh, no, I think a lot of them use the phone app, actually. Okay. Um, okay. And it's kind of funny because I, I don't know if you remember, Dean, when we were, when we were transitioning over um, also on the staff side of the unions, everybody was saying, oh, well, our, our operational departments, they're not going to be ready to do that. Ours have got that app out and <laughs> they're clicking on stuff and you know, the fact that they can pull up the diagram on their phone, they love that, um, you know, so they're not walking back to the office because they forgot the diagram. And of course, when that happens, you know, the events on the first floor and the office is on the fourth floor. Um, so um, for me, uh, just from a personal experience, I know that um, my son happened to go to UT and was president of an org. And um, we were on vacation and I guess whoever was supposed to put in the reservations um, for, their, for their event didn't do it. And he was so frustrated because that was the old system because he couldn't do it on his phone. He had to, we had to get back to the hotel and he had to hurry up and, and log in. Um, so it was, it was important to us that our students be able to, to use the app um, I think our departments probably use the desktop more, but I think our students use the app quite a bit. Okay. 
You all get uh, many people requesting changes to their event after you've approved it. Does that happen fairly often, rarely? How would you characterize that? Um, I think on our larger events, yes. And we're actually going through some, some growing pains there, mainly because uh, as event managers, we've gotten so comfortable with Mazeva. We're just like, yeah, I can change that. Quick, quick, quick. Um, and um, our operational departments, they may have already looked two weeks out and made some plans. Um, so the event hasn't been officially reviewed. So the change, communicating that change is um, more on us. We've got to, go, got to go a little bit old school with sending an email and saying, hey, there's been an update to such and such group. Mm -hmm. um, our, um, our technical team really likes showing that something, it's been reviewed, it's been completed, and that way they get that, that message, that, that change in their screen, if for some reason we change something last minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. And related to that, there's a question that came in here. Um, do you wanna talk a little bit about how you get notified about changes through Mazevo? Um, like if, but like if the requester goes in and changes their request in there, or does that ever happen? That's a really good question. Because <laughs> um, I know it has, and I'm trying to remember how it, I think it comes back up in requests. That's right. Yeah. Um, yep. I think it comes back up here because it has caused a little confusion a couple of times. We're like, wait a minute, we thought we did this already. Um, so that's where we see it. And um, we kind of had a situation where a student kept changing things and then unchanging them uh, <laughs> because we were calling them on it. <laughs> and he said, no, I didn't do that. And then he'd unchange it. So, um, so yeah, but it comes through the requests and, but for the most part, um, once we've sent the confirmation that has all the details of their event, they know that any major change, they need to uh, follow up with a quick email. You know? mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to, to jump onto the, to that, um, Colette, you asked that question, but uh, as an event planner or a global admin, up under your user profile and preferences, there's an option there to receive an email if a request is added or changed. If you just check that, oh, you'll, okay. get, you'll get an email. Oh, so, good, good. That's so also where you turn, turn off those notifications that make you crazy. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's kind of one and the same. Kimberly, you've turned it off, but if it was on, you would have seen those changes come through, so. Yeah. And there's a comment in here too from uh, JC at the University of Hawaii. They actually lock their events once they come in. So there's a, you may have seen this before. Um, it's up near the top on the event. There's a little lock button or a link up there. You click that. And what that does is it prevents a requester from going in and making changes to the request. It kind of locks it locks it out. Now you can unlock it later if you want, but while it's locked, they cannot submit changes online to you. They would have to, you know, call you or something, I guess. You know, I'm, I'm glad that that was brought up because we haven't been using that. I know we used it on one particular group that we were having trouble with, mm -hmm. but um, I'm kind of making a note right now that I don't know why we're not using it. It would make our lives easier. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, the question about the training manual. Yeah. Um, I did not. I had, and, and let me tell you that uh, when we converted to Mazevo, I was a single shingle. I was the only event manager and um, there was at the other union, the director was playing the role of event manager. It, it was a, a pretty lone event. So 
I shortly after we converted, um, we brought on two new event managers and I am not exaggerating. They were fully trained um, by doing a eight to 10 a.m. We booked it Monday through Friday. We were done by Wednesday. Um, and I just basically started with the most, you know, started from one end of the Mazevo screen and worked my way across. And then I went from the top and worked our way down. And um, the most important thing, making sure they know how to use the knowledge base. Um, I use that knowledge base nonstop. It is my, it's my Mazevo Google. And I make sure that our event managers know to use it. And they are constantly showing me new things. Um, look what I found when I was trying to figure out how to do X, Y, Z. Um, so we did not create a training manual and, um, we have, a, a another senior event manager coming on and I plan to do the training pretty much the same way. Um, it went so smooth. It's so intuitive that it just, um, it seemed like you should. Um, but then again, you know, we didn't get trained. We got in there by playing in there. And, and that's another thing we do is uh, we create fake organizations that they can actually use to play around and they won't hurt, hurt anything or accidentally, you know, send an email to a real organization. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. There's a question in here about where's the lock feature at um, here. I'll just I'll go ahead and share it on my screen. I've, I've got it up right here. I can just show everybody. Um, so the lock feature that we were just talking about with Kimberly, if you open up any event in Mazevo, if you just bring down this top window pane right here, you'll see the lock event. So when you click that, it will tell you that the requester can no longer make changes to this event. So they'll still be able to see it, but they won't be able to submit any changes until you decide if you want to unlock it. So anyways. Um, question here as well about the header messages on confirmations. Um, so you know when you add those blocks of text on your confirmations there, She's asking about um, if the header message will default for the confirmation template that you use. Um, I'll, I'll handle this one. It does not default based on the confirmation template. You can have an overall default one that'll just kind of show up, but it doesn't change depending on which confirmation template you use. So you still need to go in and pick, pick the message when you wanna include that, so. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. And Katie's commenting here. Katie's with the University of Iowa. They, they have a setting there that prevents any changes. Um, if, the, if the event's a week out, then they won't accept any more changes to it. But beyond that, if there's if it's longer period than that, then they will. So they're they're using that kind of automatic lock feature there. So and you're right, Katie, that is similar to the lock option. The lock is more of a manual way to do that when you want to do it for specific groups, or maybe that just works better based on your process. So one of the things that um I've been curious about other universities is for us in, in the event book, um, of course I pick a day where there's not any events. Um, you have your different colors and we've gotten to where we, we've really toned this down. Um, the confirmed pending for us means that while the event is confirmed, there's still more information we wanna get from them. Whereas the yellow tentative means they're not really sure this event's gonna go on. 
And I'm real curious as to what other people, um, what they see in their event book and, and the colors and the different um, approvals that they put in their event book. You want to show your screen again, Kimberly, just so we oh. can see your event book there? <laughs> and I thought I was. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, we've really narrowed it down. That's pretty much all the color you'll see on our screen, except for our study rooms are purple, but that gray means that it's a request that hasn't uh, been approved yet. Mm -hmm. um, the yellow is our tentative. For us, if it's green, it means we've done everything. We have, it's good to go. Yeah, um, yeah. For us, if it's red, it means I've talked to the client, but I haven't entered all the details yet. Um, these are some larger events that we do that take a little bit more de detail. Um, but I've wondered if anybody else has tips or tricks uh, that they use on their event book. This seems to be working really well for us. Um, as we get busier, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I know we see a lot. I mean, we see some people have a lot of statuses, but I have no idea if they're doing anything in the event book with those or anything like that. If anybody has any thoughts on that, feel free if you want to unmute yourself or just put your ideas in the chat. Yeah. Any other questions? We're right about at our time here. So if you have any last questions, feel free to put them in. Uh, afterwards, if you think of anything, uh, feel free. You can email me directly and uh, I can try my best to answer any questions that you have or, or forward it along to Kimberly. Um, but uh, we appreciate everybody's participation today. One thing we're thinking about our next Mazevo Connect, which will be next month. If you have ideas for a topic that you'd like to see presented, we would love to hear from you. We try to do these based on feedback from people. What do you want to see? What do you want to hear? So if you have any thoughts, ideas, feel free to put them in the chat or you can, uh, you can email them to me afterwards. Uh, but uh, we've got a few ideas here, but we'd love to hear what you all think. So feel free to put those in. Um, I'm not seeing anything else come through the, the chat here. So Kimberly, thank you so much. This was a great presentation. And uh, I know I learned a lot and I think a lot of people here on the call did as well. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah, really appreciate it. So thank, thank you for including me. I actually learned a lot during it too. Oh, good, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, stay tuned. I'll send out a, a link for the uh, with the recording on it and then a notice when we get the next one scheduled here for March. But uh, until then, everybody enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we hope to see you soon. Take care, Thank everybody. You. Thank Thanks. you, Kimberly. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.